I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready to make your demands right now? Say this with me. Say, Father, today I demand and I receive my daily bread. It is mine now. The angels are ministering to my needs today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. And it is happening so. Praise God. Your needs are met. You've got, see, God is blessing you to that point. You know, we prayed a prayer during the lunch hour prayer meeting. I think that was on Friday. We prayed a prayer that, listen, from henceforth, God will fulfill his word in your life. Where he says he is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that you having all sufficiency in all things, you will abound to every good work. It is time to begin to do big things for the Lord. I'm telling you big things in whatever direction the Lord will lead you. It's time to stop doing mediocre things. It is time to rise and begin to do big things for the Lord. Praise God. And that's why I should have lunch our prayer meeting. There's a lot you benefit from joining that prayer meeting. So join today. Now, let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 17. John 17 and we began to read from verse 20 spirit of the living god will thank you today your word is coming forth in power and in truth and i declare right now burdens are being lifted yokes are being destroyed in the name of the lord jesus christ amen praise god john chapter 17 and verse 20 it says, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in them, that they also may be in us. Oneness. The Father in Him, and then Him in us. So that is the oneness he is talking about. And a lot of things are just flowing through my spirit right now. <laughs> mm. You know, sometimes you take the scriptures and, and look at it. It should drive something like this should drive you to the place of prayer. Jesus desired that I be one now when he said one i want to i want to give you a picture this oneness he was talking about is such that hey lord so when you look at them you see me when you look at me you see them that's exactly what he's saying you know i always you know admonish this we can't have unity you know, like we we all desire, you know, we, we desire for that point where the church will be like one, will speak with one voice, you know, and, and, and all those things. You know, it's not going to happen the way we think. It's not going to happen like we'll call a conference of every church leader and everybody will come and, and listen. No, that's not how it works in Christ. It's not going to work that way. I'll tell you how this oneness is going to come about. It's the oneness is going to come when each one of us identifies our oneness with him. When as individuals, we identify our oneness with him. That is the only time we will begin to speak with one voice. So what do you mean by that? Yes, because he is the one who controls everything we do. Now, the Holy Spirit is our control center. Do you understand? Now, so if I get myself and be sure I'm in tune with him and you get yourself to be in tune with him and 1,000 of us get ourselves in tune with him. Now, when he speaks, he will speak once and we'll all hear him. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when we meet, 
and share. There may be some variants, but we will be saying the same thing because we will be speaking based on our understanding. And that's the beauty of our diversity in Christ. The beauty is this. I will understand it from my own language. You understand what I'm saying? From my own background, from my own experience. I will understand what God is saying. Another person will understand what God is saying. And then at the end of the day, we'll look at our notes and it's, 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 it's big. Praise God. Full of, we are all full of understanding. But then he said the same thing. So the oneness is not one leader, one person, you know, leading everybody and everybody. No, that's not how it works. It is when we all stay in our oneness with him, then we'll realize our visions are the same. Our message is the same. Thank you, Lord. Because we, we don't manufacture these things. We depend on Him. And, and, and let me tell you the truth. That is simply how we will identify the false ones in our midst. Because they won't hear what we're hearing. Now, we're not going to hear, we're not going to claim we are hearing because someone has convinced us that He has heard for us. No, 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 no. We will hear ourselves. So when someone else is speaking, it's like He's speaking my mind. He's speaking what's in my spirit. That is the oneness that Jesus was talking about. And he's saying it. Look at this. He says that the world may know, verse 21 now, this is the last part of verse 21, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. No doubt in it. Everywhere we step into, our life is to show forth the truth that Jesus was the Son of God. That's what we're here to do. We're not here to display power for our own selves. We're not here to live a life for our own self. We are here to live a life. You know, do you remember when Jesus died on that cross and that, that centurion who was in charge of his crucific um, crucifixion, he, he was watching the host. Now, now he, he has been in charge of several crucifixions. That was not his first, I'm sure. But then he was watching Jesus. And then the Bible says that day, that, that, that particular day when, when Jesus died, they had to be fast about it because they were about to enter into a high Sabbath, a special Sabbath day. And because on the Sabbath day, nobody's supposed to walk, so everybody's supposed to go home from there. Now, so it means these people, because they can't leave them on the cross. So these people have to... Uh, die before they leave. That's the only way. They have to confirm their deaths before they leave that place. And now because of the Sabbath, the next day, so they have to get home on time. Everybody in that place had to get home on time before the Sabbath starts. Sabbath starts by dawn, you know. So that, that's why the Bible says they had to go around and, and started breaking their legs. You remember the story. They broke the legs of the thief. By the time, by the time they came to Jesus, he was already dead. He had given up the ghost already. If he hadn't given up the ghost, they would, they, they, you know, because that's part of the way they kill them faster. You know, they break your bones. So that shock treatment, being crucified, it, it just rents your heart and then you die faster than normal. So, but the man was there and watching. And then he saw that Jesus didn't die out of pains. Jesus didn't die out of anything. He, he saw Jesus give up the ghosts. And he saw Jesus communicate with his father. And he said, it is finished. And then he gave up the ghost. The man was watching. And then the man said to himself, truly, this was the son of God. He saw it. He saw Jesus do something. And he recognized and said, this guy truly was the son of God. Hey, brothers and sisters, the world is waiting to find out that truly God sent Jesus. And how is the world going to find out? out? If they're going to find out out from us, when we live the life that he has called us to live, when we begin to manifest his glory, he said it here, he said it here, he said it in verse 22. He says, and the glory which thou givest me, I have given them. The glory which you give, this is Jesus talking to his father. The glory that you gave me, I'm not keeping it to myself. I have given them that they may be one as we are one. 
And then he goes on to say again, the last part of verse 23 says, that, let me read verse 23, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Any special privilege you think Jesus ever had, you have. Think about this. You think Jesus was special. You know, sometimes we, we get carried away and thinking, man, Jesus, see the things Jesus did. Brothers and sisters, Jesus said, Lord, I want the world to know that you have loved them the same way you love me. Hey, how well have you believed in that love that God has for you? No wonder John said in, in 1 John, he says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. He says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. When? He says, Now we are the sons of God. Now, do you know what that means? It means we have been given the authority and the power to manifest as sons of God. John 1 12 says, For as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become children of God. The moment you receive Christ Jesus, you have been given the authority. You have been declared. And let me tell you this truth. God declares Kabaya. God declares us as his sons with power. He doesn't declare us as his sons with just mere words. He declares us his sons with power. That's why the day you got born again, the Holy Ghost came upon you. The Holy Ghost came right into you. And then the anointing rested upon you. Listen to me. You, you didn't just get born again. You know, that's what, that's what, you know, you, you know, sometimes you need to ask yourself, am I really born again? I know many people are trying to downplay this thing, you know, say, eh, if you get born again, you don't have to feel anything, you know, because it is fate. It is fate. And then when they say those things, I ask myself, do they really know what fate is? Fate is you responding to what God has said. So the first thing is, did God say it to you? Did God say something? So what are you responding to? How can you get born again and you don't feel anything? How can you get born again and you don't know something has happened? Something, do you understand that? You were changed. You were transformed. You were, something surely happened to you, praise God. You were born again. Even a child that's born into this world knows that he's in another environment. See? So, so when a child is born, the first thing they're all waiting for is for that child, that, that child to shout and cry. Why? Why is that child crying? Hey, I'm in a new environment. Something has happened here. That's what the child is crying. He's announcing his presence. Hey, so when you get born again, there is an announcement. The Holy Ghost comes rushing into your being. I'm telling you the truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The world may know Thank you, Lord Jesus. Not just that God loves us. It's beyond us knowing. Jesus said that the world may know. Hey, hold on. How many people know that God loves you? Think about this. Do you think you're the answer to this prayer that Jesus prayed here? If, if you are the answer, then I ask you the question, how many people know that God loves you? And hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, no, no, at least people know that God loves, uh-uh. The same way he loves Jesus. How many people know? How many people around you know this? Listen. This is what we are called into. This is what we are called to manifest. This is what we are called to do. This is our life. Our life is to get the world to look at us and say, Kai, man, the only person I can, I can relate this kind of experience to is the man Jesus himself. 
The only person I can I can see God God walked or God heard or God listened to is the man Jesus. Now, now, now you're beginning to realize that we are nowhere near where God wants us to be. Praise God. He, he, Jesus was clear about his words. That the world may know. That the world, not, not, not believers. No, not believers. Unbelievers. Kalabaya Kasha. When he talk about the world, he's talking about the people of the world. Let them get to that point. Now, this is it. Remember, we, we have a mission. And what's our mission? To get every knee to bow and to get every tongue to confess that Jesus is Lord. How is that going to happen? It's not by forcing them to. No, it's by living the life. And then they will look at us and say, no, no, no. This thing about Jesus is true. If I can see it in this guy, then Jesus is true. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because our time is up today, praise God. Ah, listen, live a life that will make the world know that God loves you. And they can only quantify that love with Jesus' love. The love that God has for Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. And I also invite you for our 12 noon lunch hour prayer meeting today. Join us and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye.